Let me just fix my hat here. Hang on a second. Oh! <laughs> Didn't see that coming, did you? What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here. Welcome back to yet another video. Editing your photos, episode three, V3, version three. Today we're gonna to go through a couple of photographers. And when I say couple, I mean more than two, like six. So we're gonna go through like a half dozen of your photos. We're gonna throw some edits on them and see what we can do. If this is your first time here checking out one of these episodes, welcome. Hope you enjoy this series. It seems to be a little bit of a hit so far. So I'm really hyped you guys are enjoying it. Disclaimer, as always, before we start these episodes, this is for fun. I'm not saying that my edits make these photos better. In some cases, it may make them worse, <laughs> okay? We've all messed up. Up shadows before. <laughs> But this is just a platform for me to showcase your work. I drop your Instagram accounts there and uh, it's just a good time. It's a fun time, it's a way to give back and kind of just involve you guys so it's not just me talking at the camera about tips or vlogs. It's a, it's a fun way to involve the community, which I love. Really excited to dive into episode three. If you haven't submitted photos before, the email to do that is pmeditsmyshots at gmail.com. Now it's closed right now, so it's rejecting all emails. But when I open it, you'll find out through notifications via either Twitter or Instagram, so make sure to follow me on both of those platforms. Plug, then you'll know when to uh, when to email. If you email me photos anywhere else, they're instantly deleted and blocked. All of that, so don't even don't even bother. Jumping in to photographer number one, we have Christopher Waddell. Also, disclaimer number two: I'm horrible at pronouncing names. Waddle. I don't feel like Waddle is, I think it's Waddell. Anyways, hey Peter, I'm sure you get loads of submissions, so hopefully you have a chance to check these out. Well, today's your lucky day. Or maybe it's your unlucky day, because I, eh, who knows. Here are my raw photos. It's a little mix of things, depending on what you're looking for. He's a British photographer born in Tanzania. Woo! Grown up in eight countries. Wow, that's incredible. Pretty much always had a camera since a young age, starting off with film, with his own dark room, while living in Kenya. Been to Kenya, magical place. And traveled to 69 countries so far. Wow, that's a lot of countries. That's like all of the countries. How many countries are there? More than 100? There's more than 100, right? Oh, you got a ways to go, bro. Don't flex. Don't flex on this channel. All right, so I edited a few of these because I, I couldn't help myself because they were incredible. We have a star nighttime sky shot from Namibia. We have a church in Iceland. We have northern lights in, of course, Iceland. And we have a snowy mountain shot because, you know, I don't like editing those at all. And that's also from Iceland. So let's dive into some of these. We'll start with the church. This is the before. Beautiful photo right off the bat. When we're looking at this church photo, the ominous Icelandic landscape is just very present. You've got the fog billowing down from the top of the frame, really making that mysterious background. This, I mean, this photo as is, it doesn't even really need any edits. I'd be pumped on it. Now, the only thing I might do right off the bat before even getting into any editing is I might have actually placed the church on the right side of the frame and had the entire left side be all of the background and the mountains and, and stuff like that. Now, we don't know what was on the left side. Maybe it was like a parking lot. So for obvious reasons, you're framing the other way. There's also this kind of really cool cross made out of wood. That may have been one of the reasons for framing it this way. There's nothing wrong with this at all. Just personal preference. I would have preferred it on the right side. I don't know why, but it's just me. Beautiful photo. All I really wanted to do is just kind of give it a little more punch, give it a little more of that like contrast, that classic feel that I go for in my photos, which I ended up with something like this. That is my edit. You can see it's shifted a little more towards the green. I got rid of most of that kind of subdued, desaturated kind of, uh, that Iceland feel, that raw Iceland feel. If you've ever been there and you shoot a bunch of photos, your raw photos, they all kind of have that. They've got a look of their own. So I just kind of did away with a little bit of that while still trying to keep a little bit of that, like that moody tone, that moody vibe. So I actually dehazed it a little bit to bring through the mountains in the background a little bit more, just because they're so awesome. Yes, fog looks amazing when it's covering everything, but that is inherently one of the problems as well. It's covering everything. Personal preference at that point. Next up, we're looking at this nighttime shot. Now, right away, the sky is beautifully exposed. Like that Milky Way straight ripping through the center of that photo. Yes, please. He's got a flashlight, so he must have been standing there for a little bit of time, maybe a little bit of a long exposure, not too long. Obviously, the subject and the foreground are in silhouette, so I wanted to keep that. But I wanted to see more of the photo just because it feels a little bit too dark. So upon sliding the exposure up, like you, it just brings the photo to life. You see so much more and you're like, wow, this this is a, this is a banging photo. But I didn't want to bring the exposure up or the shadows up too high 
sky because then you lose a little bit of that silhouette and you start washing out the beauty that is this sky. Like the stars in this photo, in this raw photo, you, don't, you almost don't even want to change. You almost only want to edit the foreground using some gradient masks from the bottom. So I did that. I did it for both the top and the bottom. I had to lighten up the sky a little bit. I changed the blues more from like that deep blue a little bit to like a softer, brighter teal hue. I feel like that really makes the sky have a little more definition, have a little more depth to it, a little more story to it, a little more color. And I love that. It also brings out a little bit of the foreground so you can visibly now see the subject holding the flashlight. One of the things I did do is adjust the luminance for the noise value because nighttime photos sometimes, depending how they're shot, have a lot of noise. I didn't go too far because that would just make things weird and plasticky. So I just raised it up enough that it didn't look noisy. Like maybe the ISO was too high, anything like that. Overall, left it there. Pretty pumped with that. Great shot, man, great shot. Moving on to the Northern Lights down this road. Another one of these photos where upon moving the shadows up and the exposure up, it reveals the entire road, which is just a perfect, beautiful leading line. I did the same thing with gradient masks above the photo and below the photo to really kind of give that nice exposure fix so that you get a nice rich road and a nice rich sky without washing out one or the other because they're two different brightness values. Whenever I'm editing Northern Lights, I I always like to shift the photo a little more to the cool tones, the blue tones. I feel like it really kind of just brings it out a lot better than being warm northern lights. That's just my opinion. I feel like it's a really cold kind of experience where you usually see it when you're really, really far north. And uh, I just feel like that really brings out the northern colors of the northern lights. A little bit of dehaze, a little bit of contrast, your regular basic adjustments, dropping down into the HSL cubes. I like to call them the cubes. Messing with the yellows and the oranges, obviously here to get the desired look for the grass and the moss around the road. One of the things I did forget to do though, it distracted me was get rid of these yellow posts. So let's go ahead and, uh, okay, now they're gone. Much better in my opinion. This is the photo I ended up with. You can see them side by side. Pretty happy with that. Great capture too. You're just crushing this trip, man. Johnny's 69 countries over here. Last photo here, obviously mountains, lake. It's a little bit dark, so I brighten that up now. When I brightened it up, it was a little bit too blue, so I desaturated it, went down to the HSL cubes, killed a little bit of that blue, so it was more of a white photo, a white snowy winter photo, and then I cropped out some of that foreground. I felt like the snow along the foreground there was just a little too much of it, and I just kept looking at it. I just couldn't help myself. This beautiful landscape, but I just kept looking at the snow, cropped a little bit of that, brought it into Photoshop, clone stamped out some of the areas that were also distracting where the rocks were peeking through the snow just enough that it looked kind of ugh, go away clean that up and you're left with a photo that looks a little bit like this pretty pumped on that too so Christopher Waddell thank you so much for submitting these are great photos and we are all jealous and hate you for traveling to 69 countries cheers get wrecked <laughs> don't actually just I appreciate you Okay, next up we have Andre um, from Portugal. Let's just go with that. We have Andre from Portugal. He is 23 years old. Here's my surf photo for you. Oh, look at that. Wow. I've always wanted to get a dope surfing shot like this. This looks awesome. Dude's just touching the wave as he goes by. Super cool. Uh, I wanna brighten the subject up a little bit. I wanna bring down the highlights and uh, obviously make this water just a tad more on the teal tropical blue. Moving forward, the edit that I came up with at the end looks a little bit like this. Now, it's got that classic PM contrasty punch to it. Some clarity, some contrast, did a lot of little things here. Actually put an oval mask around the subject to specifically brighten him and feather him separately to the rest of the wave. So I started by doing all the exposure and highlights and shadows and all of those things like we do in pretty much every photo. And when I got happy with that, I made the mask around the subject and adjusted his light and levels so that it would basically not affect the rest of the wave. So that's what we got. It looks like off to the side here, there's either like someone dropped a camera or that's someone else's lens like poking through in a housing or it's someone else's surfboard or an otter. <laughs> Okay. In the middle of the water here, there's a distraction. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is get rid of that. Played with the HSL tabs, the HSL cubes, if you will. Tweaked it so that I got a little bit of a, the teal kind of color going in here, a little bit of the green. Didn't wanna go overkill on it, but the water shifts color as it goes from, you can see the bottom left of the photo as it curls all the way into that wave, turns a little more green, a little more teal, and then crests into like this 
white ocean spray. Now, part of that spray got a little bit blown out. I tried to recover it in Lightroom, but it looks like it was already, it must have been like a super sunny day. So like that is some really harsh condition. There's a lot of exposure happening in this photo from too dark to too light to completely blown out. So it's, there's a wide range of stuff going on here. So did my best to recover some of those highlights, but all in all, Andre, dope photo. Hope you enjoy the edit. It's gonna happen one day. I'm gonna take that photo. Thank you so much for submitting. Next up, we are looking at Emily Martin. Where are you from, Emily Martin? She didn't say. And let's take a look at this raw photo that she submitted floating a leaf. And you guys know, I love to float things. Done a tutorial on it, linked above, if I remember to link it above after we make this video. But this photo is just simple, it was nice, I felt like it was exposed really well, and when I see a photo that's exposed really well as a raw photo, it really makes me wanna edit it, because I know that edits are just going to look so much better on a photo that's already even across the board. Jumping into the edit that I did after the fact, boom, that's what I came up with. It's not too much of a departure from Emily's shot, because she did such a great job, but I did try to give it like a little bit of like a dark filmic look. Added some green, took down some of the red and orange in the fingers with the HSL tabs due to some of the edits that I was making, like saturation, contrast, and clarity. Messed with the greens to get the desired look, shifted it towards the blue side to give it that, again, that moody tone feeling that I've really been vibing on lately. You know, editors, photographers, all of us, we go through shifts in our work. Sometimes a lot of our work looks a certain way, and then maybe within two years, it looks totally different. Maybe within two months, it looks totally different based on your experience experiences in life, the people you're hanging out with, the places you've been, these things change. But right now I'm kind of on this moody, dramatic kick. So a lot of my edits are, you know, are gonna show up that way due to that kick that I'm on. So this is the photo that I ended up with. Emily, thank you for submitting. That's a great photo. I love that you were floating that. I don't know how you were floating it. Maybe you used string, maybe you used fishing line, maybe you used the dark arts. I'm fine with all three. Next up, we got Evander Lips. Evander Lips says, hey dude, here are some raw images. Thank you. From my favorite trip ever, I've posted some of these edits on my Instagram if you'd like to take a look as well. These were taken on the Sony A7R 3 Let's take a look at the raw shots. Number one, wow. That's just Lion King if I've ever seen it before. Ah! Everything the light touches. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. This is a beautifully exposed photo. Looking at this straight out of the camera, you almost don't even need to do anything. Maybe a little bit of like exposure to just brighten it up a tad, but the light that the sun must be setting or rising, I don't know, it just looks incredible. There's not even a whole lot that I'm gonna do to this. Jumping ahead to the edit that I came up with after the fact, boom, here we are. You can see not a whole lot of difference, a little more clarity, a little more contrast, and I played with the orange. I basically just played with the luminance of the warm tones. That's pretty much all I did. I didn't want to take away anything else. I really liked the mood and vibe this photo gave me right from opening the raw. So it didn't take a whole lot to get it to where I'd be happy with it. You can see flipping back and forth. That's the raw. That's the edit. That's the raw. That's the edit. So there's a little bit of change there, but not too much that it changes the original drastically to the point where you're like, yo, why did you put a mountain in the middle of the desert? That's the shit. Why did you do that? It's subtle. Second shot is this little valley here with the mountains in the background. Love it. Love the water. Love the stones in the water. Love the reflection of the clouds in the water. Sky, crazy blown out. Almost no sky at all. When I looked at this raw photo, I thought to myself, we gotta put a sky in there. Like, I'm, I'm not sorry because I like doing that stuff, but this 100% needs sky. And you can see the outline of the mountains here. Those are so, so contrasted off that stark white blown out background. It would be really easy to sky replace. Just out of curiosity, Drop down the highlights, brought up the shadows a little bit. You can see that it reveals basically an entire another peak behind and some clouds. So I thought, you know what? Saved, don't need to. And this is the edit that I came up with. So you can see all those clouds, the whole mountain ridge in the background, all that stuff was there, was able to recover it because he shot raw and because I was using Lightroom and adjusted those highlights and shadows. Contrasty, muted the greens, got those orange tones, lifted the blacks just a touch, dropped the saturation, as you can see, just a little bit because I didn't want it to be too colorful. Again, giving it that more moody tone for a forest specifically. You guys know I love to drop down my greens and subdue them quite heavily. And this is no exception. Really, really happy of how this came out, especially the fact we were able to recover so much from the sky without having to replace it. Uh, yeah, it looks like you had one banger of a trip and uh, thank you for submitting. Okay, moving on to Tristan Evan. Tristan Evan, you didn't give me any information. If you're watching this right now, let me know in the comments, upvote his comment. I'll drop your Instagram link 
into the description so I can edit this because he took a great shot here. I'm gonna use it for the thumbnail, it's so good. And I want you to get some credit for this. So let me know who you are, man. So again, if you guys are submitting in the future, please tell me a little bit about you. Give me your Instagram handle. Tell me where you took the pictures, what you're into, so I can, you know, I got a little bit of conversation I can I can enlighten all the viewers with. Nevertheless, this is a great photo. Check out, this is the raw of Tristan Evan, maybe himself or one of his buddies, sitting on a dope, what is that, a Super 73? Super, it's one of those super cool Jesse Wellens automatic electric bikes that I want. Hint. If you guys are watching this, send me one. Right away, I want to lift the shadows, fix the exposure, but seeing that he's on a dirt road, I know I can make that dirt road go from pretty much unsaturated, bleh, to like rich, heavy, orange, sandy, dusty, contrasty deliciousness. So right away, I looked at that ground and was like, oh, oh yeah, this is gonna be great. I can bring those blues down to more of like a teal, almost desaturated completely because that sky is way too blue. If there was clouds in it, I might keep them, but love the framing, love the shadow, love the pose, love the bike, love the props, love the photo. Here's my edit. I mean, you probably already saw it from the thumbnail. A lot brighter, changed the entire photo to feel like we're now in a warm desert. As you can see, everything I talked about the ground beforehand, done here. Much much darker, much more contrasty, completely warmed up. The sky, you can still see hints of blue, but very, very much desaturated. I play with the colors of the sweater to match the environment as well. So now it feels a little more like we planned this shoot. The whole ensemble, the photo now matches very, very well. And I'm a huge fan of how this edit came out. Really pumped on this. I'd post this on my grid. So Tristan, thanks so much for submitting. Again, let me know who you are, man, because this is a great photo. Thank you very much, I appreciate you. All right, and we are going to end off with none other than a coffee photo from Vivek VP. Hi, I'm Vivek from India. Short but sweet. Here's the raw photo. Just holding a nice little cup of brew out over the mountains. Exactly what I'd love to be doing right now. Very well exposed. Exposed for the background, which makes it very easy for me to lift the shadows and expose the foreground without ruining the background. So jumping ahead to the edit that I got. Boom, there you go. Really wanted to emulate the film look with this. That film stock, that Fuji Pro 400H Portra 400 deliciousness scanned on a Frontier scanner. Mm. Shot medium format, 645, maybe with like a little, uh, I digress. Added some film grain in here, as you can see. Added a little more warm tones to kind of just bring out that nice skin complexion with the coffee popping off the background that is a little more subdued green that shifts from green to teal to white. That sky is layered. It's a really, really great photo. It's really simple, but it just goes to show you sometimes just taking photos of basic things also come out super awesome. Great landscapes inherently look great because they're insane and they look amazing and this world's nuts and the earth is so beautiful. But sometimes also just taking a picture of you holding a coffee that's well exposed can also just evoke the same emotions and just be as cool and as great of an addition to anyone's portfolio as taking a picture with a headlamp in the desert with a lot of stars. So to everybody that submitted, thank you so much. I absolutely love making these videos. That was episode three. I will let you know when you can send in your photos. So keep an eye on my Instagram and Twitter account for editing your photos episode four. We'll probably do it in a few weeks from now, but to everybody that submitted, your Instagram links have been added to the description as well as I hope everyone took note of them on screen when they showed up. Thank you again. It does take courage to put your raw work out there on a platform for someone else to work on who has a completely different style from you that might very well edit it completely different from you. That's, uh, that's no easy task for either parties. Thank you so much for watching. Guys, hit that like button, smash it. All those things that YouTubers harass you to do at the end of videos. Subscribe if you aren't already. Hit the bell. Do all that stuff. Love you guys. See you tomorrow for Two Minute Tuesday. <gasps> Peace. This hat is going to work. Oh, that was perfect. That felt good. That felt good. Okay, next up we have Andre Hilar... Hil Evander. Evander Holyfield. Didn't that guy bite off someone's ear? Like, rah, arr, rah. <laughs> You know, I watched that pay-per-view when I was a kid. I watched it live. I was with like my, I was with my half brother, and I was like, "Yo, what's, what is this? What's going on? Why did that guy just eat that guy's head?" And he, and then it was over. And I was like, "That's it." And they were all hyped. Sorry, I forgot this was recording entirely. <laughs> Wait, arr, just chewed his. Arr.
I'm not going to say anything. You can just go now. To stare off who's going to win. I mean, I could sit here all day. Can you? I mean, the video has to end at some point, so I guess technically you would win. Because, <laughs> I mean, I'm not actually... A... You ever had a staring contest with someone before? I suck at it. Like, I just start laughing immediately. Staring is just no good at it. I can't, I can't, I can't even do it with nobody. <laughs> Have you ever had a staring contest with a C200 and a giant aperture light to nobody? Here we are.